Well, I told you yesterday we went in great detail about Operation Gunrunner, a plan to sell guns to straw purchasers. In other words, those with suspected ties to the Mexican cartels. And apparently the ATF was uh, then banking on those purchasers walking the guns across the border into Mexico. And the plan supposedly, although ill-conceived from the beginning, uh, they didn't even put GPS on these guns, which would have been the easiest thing to do. Anyway, the idea was to get to the uh, leadership of these cartels. In the process, these guns ended up in the hands of murderers who killed at least two border agents. Uh, Now the administration is stonewalling testimony uh, before the uh, committee, both the Congressional Committee and the Senate Committee with Charles Grassley and uh, Congressman Darrell Issa, who joins us now. Congressman, how are you? Well, I'm doing fine, Sean, but uh, our democracy is threatened by the kind of reckless behavior, uh, plus, of course, our relationship with uh, with Mexico is, is incredibly hindered when they know that instead of helping them stop guns from going to Mexico, we actually aided in those high-powered weapons getting to Mexico. Well, and it resulted in the death of these agents. Now, the problem is, is that the government has been stonewalling. You, you're you're doing your job. You're with the Government Reform Oversight Committee. This is your job to, to check out when the government may be overreaching its bounds. They are supposed to be cooperative. You've run into stonewalling, and there's a possibility that even our Attorney General, Eric Holder, did not tell you the truth about his his knowledge about this from the beginning. Well, Eric Holder certainly wants us to believe that uh, he didn't know what so many other people knew. He didn't even know after uh, uh, an agent was killed, uh, Brian Terry, and it was confirmed that it was with Fast and Furious. He wants us to believe that nobody briefed him on the program, that he had to learn it from a uh, news service. So it, it is what we like to say is incredible or without credibility. But more importantly, he should have known. And if he says he didn't know, then why, why does he have a job that's so important if he's not going to do it? Well, let me ask you this, because there's new information that has uh, come out about this, that, in fact, Eric Holder, back in 2009, gave a speech bragging about engineering the operation. I'm sure you've read this by now. We have, and uh, you know, there's some question about whether he's taking credit for the, uh, the the gun runner program that quote came out of the Bush administration, or actually for Fast and Furious. But our belief is that he was happy to take credit for what might be Lanny Brewer's uh, mastermind, because Lanny Brewer believed this was a good program. Uh, it was just poorly done by ATF. On the other hand. Uh, a career uh, professional, Nelson, has testified that uh, he was kept in the dark on so many of these items. It wasn't until after uh, Brian Terry's death that he started reading information available to justice that hadn't been available to him. And uh, to quote him, he was sick to his stomach. Well, you have accused the Justice Department of seeking to, quote, limit and control Nelson's communications with Congr- Congress and said the Department of Justice was, quote, muzzling Mr. Melson. Now, for those that don't know, Melson is what, the interim uh, director of the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, correct? Correct. He's a, he's a career professional, but he is serving in what would be otherwise a political position. He serves at the pleasure of the president. And uh, so when they said, uh, you know, you'll go there on the day we tell you with our attorneys, uh, and just failed to mention that he could go there on the date of his choosing with his attorney, ultimately... Uh, better minds realize that this is a man who was being thrown under the bus, accused of everything that went wrong, uh, and that he needed to do what he did, which was tell us the whole truth with his own attorney, who, by the way, never stopped him in the in the testimony. He simply was there well, uh, in case he was needed. What was interesting about this, according to your letter, um, you, you were citing closed-door testimony uh, that uh, Eric Holder – and uh, was literally preventing him or trying to prevent him. And Melson, when he actually came and gave an interview to you in the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee and Senator Charles Grassley and others, uh, he came with his counsel instead of Department of Justice and ATF counsel who were originally scheduled to accompany him. What do you make of that? I don't think he trusts uh, justice, not after what he's seen they kept from him during Fast and Furious and how he's been treated during the interim. I think what finally happened was as ATF agents at all levels in Mexico and here in the United States were giving us voluntary testimony, many of them as true whistleblowers coming in proactively. Uh, We were getting a consistent story, which is this isn't the way ATF does business. This was an anomaly. 
Uh, I think he finally got to a point where he wanted to tell us what he knew. And one thing that you need to know about Melton, this is a career professional assistant U.S. attorney who agreed to do various jobs. And when Fast and Furious was just starting, he was brought in practically the day it started. Now, I understand. Now, yeah, go ahead. I just want to make it clear that this is somebody who admits he should have done better, should have known more, uh, and he regrets what has happened at ATF and the impact. But this is not somebody who was part of a, a long-standing uh, relationship with ATF, or he's not a career, he's not a political appointee, but yet he's being thrown under the bus by the administration. Well, I mean, this is what's amazing to me, because apparently during a secret interview uh, designed, I would say, to circumvent Justice Department attorneys and 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 ATF attorneys, this guy, Melson, this career servant, public servant, as you're describing, um, was telling you and Senator Grassley that after he and the ATF senior leadership and their entire team were reassigned, uh, after every manager involved in Project Gunrunner, they were prohibited from telling Congress about the reassignments. If that's true, is that not obstruction of a congressional investigation? Well, certainly it has, it has effectively obstructed or delayed our investigation. Uh, there's certain technical language one has to use. I think the uh, justice crossed the line. I think what they did was wrong. Uh, but before we start talking about what they did being obstruction of justice and illegal, I want them to stop slow-rolling discovery. I want to stop getting you – know, they tell me how many pages of discovery I get. They don't mention to the public that they're absolutely black because they've been fully redacted. I get pages with zero uh, text on it, and yet they count it as discovery. And you know, we've made it clear we have a right to see the unredacted forms. The only time we get unredacted forms, and we're getting more all the time, is from whistleblowers. Uh, and, of course, Justice complains that when we send them a letter asking about it, that that ultimately is, is damaging their ongoing investigation. It's like, well, then, why don't you show us the documents and tell us why? So, in other words, so you, you've had people send you documents. They send you the same document, totally redacted, and you already have the information. Does that information imply to you that there's a major cover-up going on? Well, certainly we see repeatedly redacted sheets, which when we put them next to the unredacted, there's no justification for re redacting. It's very, very clear. They're trying to cover their backsides, and whether it's, uh, DEA or Justice or the U.S. Attorneys or Lanny Brewer, uh, this whole group of who knew what, when, and why did they do it anyway uh, is slowly becoming unraveled. And, you know, the real question is, do they want this to look like uh, Iran-Contra but without even a good purpose? At least with Iran-Contra, we're trying to free hostages. But this looks like a plan that is not defensible after the fact, right. and yet they're trying to defend it. One last question about Melson. Uh, when he said he reviewed the internal documents and he expressed dismay in his testimony about how the operation was run and that he was, quote, sick, sick to his stomach in all of this. Um, and, and by the way, his testimony corroborated information indicating that the DEA and FBI may have had a role in the operation. All of this. You know, what is it that they did that was so wrong? What 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 possibly could make somebody a career professional like that sick to his stomach? How, how awful can that be? Sean, it's many things, but I'll just give you one that your listeners will appreciate. When you request a wiretap, you give a tremendous amount of information to the judge. When Nelson read the wiretap, he realized that DEA and Justice already knew what his people were being told they were doing the operation to discover. And you look and say, well, why would you, why would you tell us that uh, that you need to get this, and this is what we're working for, when in fact you already have it? That's just the tip of the iceberg. I'll give you one more because it's very important. The, the uh, ATF agents in Mexico were not only kept in the dock, dark, and not told about Fast and Furious, but if they found the weapon from Fast and Furious and they typed in the serial number, they didn't get a hit or a miss. They had a network error. And they never quite figured out that these weapons were special in that sense because yeah. it was designed to cover it up. This is the kind of craziness Listen, that it went on from the day Obama was sworn in. I, I would think we'd have the ability, if we wanted to track where the weapons went, wouldn't we be able to just put a simple, small GPS into, into the gun and, and one that's not detectable? Absolutely. If we were trying to properly track these weapons, the gun cases would have had embedded uh, the tracking systems. We would have followed them with overhead aircraft or satellites. We would have done the things that you do if you don't want to take a chance on a gun getting into a bad guy's hand. Instead, 
we uh, aided, abetted, helped, and in some cases even paid for those weapons to get to the worst of the worst in Mexico. All right. Appreciate you being with us. Thanks very much. Uh, the Congressman uh, Daryl Issa will continue to follow this.